Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Afrovibes Festival here at the Bali. Um, and a special warm welcome to everybody who's following us via the live stream and the people in the room. Um, I think we're having technical difficulties while I'm doing my intro. Pet to yourself, right? Yeah, we're good? Okay. Then we're gonna, just going to continue. Um, I'm Isabel Sheridan. I work here as a program editor here at the Bali, and I'll be your host this coming hour. How do we look at black and queer bodies? And how can one investigate these perceptions of the body in a performance? This coming hour, I will explore these questions. Um, and I'm not going to do that by myself, because that would be incredibly boring. Uh, I'm here with two great performers, great um, people. Um, on my left, I have uh, Kwanele Finch Tusi, model, elected as Mr. Africa in 2021, but most of all, dancer and choreographer, uh, and currently artist in residence here at Afrovibes Festival. Yes. Warm welcome to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, and on my right, I have Igor Freybach, a choreographer or physical theater maker, um, originally from Bosnia, but living and working in the Netherlands, correct? Yeah. Correct, totally. Cool. Well, then we're ready to start. Um, it's interesting because I just introduced you to the audience and kind of also to each other, but uh, you actually know each other already. Mm -hmm. That's true, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah um, <laughs> uh, how did you guys meet? Um, I'm going to say online through Zoom. That's <laughs> through an interesting Zoom. question. <laughs> Marjorie Boston introduced us. Um, and uh, we had a uh, we had a conversation, and from there um, uh, we took off. We yeah. started making a yeah. short performance, doing research, and um, and the rest is history. Now. online and yeah. then you know we just we kind of gelled and we worked together so mm. it's been good yeah. yeah that's a that's that's a nice way of meeting each other yeah. um and uh can you remember your first encounter with igor's work what was the first thing you saw made by him uh color color yeah. yeah i saw a lot of color i saw uh repetition i saw uh empty spaces mm -hmm. um that became very loud so I know work, I saw work, um, I forgot the name, sorry, Ego. <laughs> it might help you f f fill in the blanks. <laughs> um, but you had uh, dancers uh, bouncing. Yeah. Um, on one on trampolines? Uh, one of the trampolines. Mm -hmm. One G. I found it so interesting because I was, I was very um, interested in how he could see beyond the simple act of jumping or bouncing. Yeah. Um, and then f kind of find the language um, through the body uh, and then also find concepts uh, out of something so simple, which is uh, very interesting for me mm -hmm. also as an artist. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to uh, later on in this show, we're going to watch a, a small clip of uh, OMG. Um, but first, Igor, I would like to ask you, um, what did you think of uh, Cornelia's work, of uh, Finch? Um, I googled Finch as well and uh, his Instagram popped up and then <laughs> I saw this enormously handsome, <laughs> muscular um, guy who is a model and mm -hmm. um, Mr. Africa. So that was... Um, we can't <laughs> deny that. That was... <laughs> He's um, handsome. Well, hello. <laughs> and then um, I did some more research uh, and then uh, on YouTube I found out his... Uh, some of his work, which really, um, to me, was about vulnerability, strength, repetition, um, uniformity. Um, so a lot of themes that I work with as well, mm -hmm. however, in a total different 
form or uh, setting and outcome. So that was really interesting to me, like how. Mm -hmm. oh, a little adjustment yeah. of the mic so we can all hear you better. Um, like how does he work and um, so many things relating to each other, but yet at the same time such a different outcome. So that's yeah. always like very interesting. Where do we meet and when do we split like to go after our own styles? Yeah, because that, that is indeed a very interesting question. Um, where do you think the, the, the common, common things are uh, between you two practices? Creativity. Creative, creativity in the sense that <clears throat> as much as uh, ego uh, works differently, mm -hmm. um, I think when we are in a space together, we are able to kind of become um, very creative by what we see and what we feel and being present in that moment mm -hmm. and going with it. I think that's what we... Um, uh, how strong our collaboration was mm -hmm. um, by creating Moving Beyond and the, the, the piece with the dancers from Code Arts and HKU. I think we were working on impetus, we were working on feeling, we were working on what, 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 what is coming now uh, and let's mm -hmm. go with that. A lot of intuition. It's a lot of intuition. Yeah, um, and I think that's very common with us. I feel ego is very... Um, good in sensing, censoring the room. Oh, <laughs> that means, I don't know what that means. <laughs> kind of, <laughs> kind of like, okay, oh, I'm not doing this now. Or, um, or if, if, and it was so strange because there would be moments where um, how we would do the, um, the, the workshops with the students is that we would, mm -hmm. Maybe I would come in, and then Ego would go. Okay, you do. You, you can go. I, I'll just stand on the side and observe. And then, yeah. funny. Maybe I was thinking exactly what he was thinking, or uh, I would go to him and I'd be like, "Oh, why don't you put like a, a lamp over there? Or maybe they can all start laughing at the same time." And I think, and he'll say like, "Oh, actually, I was also thinking the same thing." Um, mm -hmm. So I think that that collaboration was was um, very very. Our energy is linked, yeah. and our creativity then There's allowed a, a to kind of symbiosis yeah, and yeah. in a way. We always said yeah. yes to each other. I think yes. in, in my experience that we never said like, but why or no, ah. let's not do that. It's, mm. It was always like, for example, this lamp. Like, why not? Let's let's do mm -hmm. it. Do we it's hear? crazy, but let's do it. Yeah, or maybe it's beautiful or crazy but beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so we kept saying yes to each other, and I think yeah. that's the. Um, best way to work each other on ch such a short notice mm -hmm. um, and uh, we only had 12 days to mm. to put something together for thir 20 wow. to 30 minutes so mm -hmm. um, and what I also think the the main um, common thing is that we seek both the humanity in the performer on mm -hmm. stage mm -hmm. so whatever technique or whatever background you have uh, culturally or or um, uh, artistically, it it really doesn't matter to us. Yeah. We just want to see personality and mm -hmm. um, realness. I yeah. think, as RuPaul would say it, like yeah. it's like we want to see you and not your <laughs> school or your technique. And that is, yeah. it was it was mm. sometimes it was really hard for the students because they are so schooled to mm. perform at their best mm. um, mm. by the mm. rules of the school. Mm. Um, that perfection almost masks somebody's Yeah, in a way what they think it's the best and mm. they worked so hard because they're in the fourth gear and I remember when I was in my fourth year like doing internships, like it was like oh yeah, let's mm. I'm gonna do the best internship ever and then yeah. you realize but wait a minute, I'm passing my limits or like uh, my own creativity and mm -hmm. um, so in a way we also had to challenge them by pulling them back to their own strength which they already possessed in a way yeah yeah so. and i was also wondering um well this sounds like a match made in heaven by the way the way you said yes to each other and really gave each other space to uh, explore your own creativity but also together um what did you learn from each other mm -hmm. Like maybe in terms of uh, techniques, but also insights. I think I'll talk a little bit ab about approach. As much as we as we spoke about approach, Ego's uh, way of working is is very different from my own um, oh, oh, uh, kind of studying when I was studying in university. Mm -hmm. In what way? Um, so my uh, so I 
I uh, studied at uh, Forgotten Angle Theatre Collaborative, which is based in Johannesburg, but then they moved to Mpumalanga. It's directed by PJ Sabeha. And PJ Sabeha, well, I kind of I did a, an internship and then I got into the company. Mm-hmm. And that was the only dance, dance training that I did. Yeah. Um, and his way of working, I adopted it because he was more in the students or in with the dancers. So he would come on the st- in the rehearsal space and kind of do and move with us. Um, or <laughs> if if I was moving, he would literally take my foot or my hand and put it there and go, "Now breathe." Like I want to, I want to, I want to see you breathe. I want to see you open up, open up, open up. Yeah. So that was more visceral. I had a visceral upbringing in terms of my dance training, mm-hmm. and with ego's uh, way of working is also very um, um, intimate uh, and very personal. So one on one. But he, he, he can also have a sense of kind of stepping out um, and observing yeah. and, and wanting the students to come up with it instead of giving the students the actual um, kind of choreography mm-hmm. or so it's direction. So a two-way street. Yeah. yeah. So I, I found that so beautiful to, to learn from Ego, mm-hmm. um, which is something I think I definitely want to adopt in my teachings where there's a balance between going in with the students uh, or with the dancers or with the collaborator or the dancer, mm-hmm. but also stepping out and directing mm-hmm. and seeing it from um, an umbrella, seeing it in a, in a bigger, as, a, as an ego, yeah. uh, which is something that is it's really, really good. Because I have, <laughs> of course, the opposite. I want yeah. to step in more mm-hmm. and I see him work and dance and sweat with the students on, on stage. I'm like, wow. Let's let's try that next time yeah, when, yeah. I'm, when I'm making or whenever that will be. But it, it's really interesting to see how you can come up in the movement uh, in in a moment with a new movement and um, and step by step make this um, choreography, so to speak, um, yeah. which is which is really different than than how I work. Like I maybe. Mm-hmm. On the first sequence, like we call it, the sisterhood yeah. um, sequence, mm. I maybe worked for three hours with the two dancers. Yeah. I think you also work way faster in that sense, mm. that I really want to dive into the movement and mm. connect mm-hmm. them, find dynamics, mm. the meaning, um, the depth, like what do they mean to you and why are you mm. moving the way you're moving? Um, and uh, and you go way faster through it, and then mm. later come back to it. So it's it's mm. uh, in your your process. I think it's also more repetitive than mine, mm. um, which is I think a good uh, difference as well. And yeah. that's something to me like um, mm. the 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 time and the and the repetition is really interesting to um, yeah embed in my own work as well. Yeah. Well, it's beautiful to hear that so much can be gained from a good (coughs) collaboration. Mm. Um, Well, before we um, continue this part of the conversation, um, I would like to delve into uh, your personal artistry a little bit more. Um, Finch, I would like to start with you, because um, in preparation of this interview, um, I heard that you find it hard to call yourself an artist. Mm -hmm. And I was really wondering what you you mean by that. Mm. (laughs) Find it hard to call myself many things. <laughs> um, I always, I always um, called myself uh, um, an artist when I was growing, when I was learning about art, mm-hmm. and it was for me it was a stereotypical kind of definition. An artist is a person that looks like this, and dresses like this, and thinks like this, and acts like this. And so I grew up in in, in, in kind of wanting to be that image mm-hmm. because what or what does that image, image look like for you i mean when i when i was growing up um the art the artist that i knew first of all was my teacher my dramatic mm-hmm. arts teacher who had lots of bangles and she had different colors and she was almost like a hippie uh, had like different colors every day she would uh, be very expressive and loud with her words mm. Um, and re- and she was like she read a lot of books and she came she was smoking with tea all the time no I think you know I think and I kind of I thought okay maybe I should also be that and then I 
for a year or maybe two years, I tried. <laughs> I was like, Jingles. yeah. He still But smokes, though. I still, oh, sometimes. Ooh, the gossip at this table. <laughs> sometimes, I think. And then I grew out of it. Yeah. I grew out of it because I thought that wasn't me. Yeah. Um, and, I, and, and, and I think I find it hard to call myself an artist because mm -hmm. of the many s kind of definitions that I employed in the term artist. Yeah. Um, so, uh, first of all, I think I am is more powerful for me than saying I am this or I am that. Mm -hmm. And it speaks, it speaks a lot to also my queer identity. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think queer, queer identity is all about sexuality mm -hmm. uh, when, it, when it, it's more than just sexuality. Mm -hmm. It's about um, more than what we see, more than what people have read about. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, and I think I've, ad I've adopted that in my work. I've adopted that which is other. I have, I've adopted the other mm -hmm. um, in, in my own way of, of, of living also, mm -hmm. um, in my relationships. Um, I never want to be the stereotype or be mm -hmm. the... Okay, he, you are a black queer, so mm -hmm. therefore you need to look like this and do work that looks like this, and so that yeah. categories you fit are into limiting. the category. Yeah. Um, and so most of the work for me now, and the peer, the person that I am, um, kind of presents the idea, but then goes deeper into it mm -hmm. in terms of getting inside the the work, getting inside who I am. Mm -hmm. um, Uh, and it's, it's funny because then a lot of people go to my Instagram and they say, "Is he really an artist or is he just the model?" Well, that's a, that's an and, interesting uh, and, interesting that you put the yeah, point there. Yeah, and and I, and that's and that's the the challenge that I always present to people so that they don't type box me. Yeah, because uh, how are those um, like being an underwear model on the one side and being an yeah. artist, but also being so much more as you just pointed out? Yeah. Um, how do you how do you rhyme those? I'm identities also for an audience or maybe it's just interesting to challenge them with the perception funny i actually had a um, when when i was growing up i thought to myself that i was going to you know uh, not understand um my 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 identity which in the beginning yes of course i mean i grew up in an indian school i grew up mm -hmm. with an indian family eating uh indian food uh mm -hmm training in Bhagavad, I mean, learning Bhagavad Gita, uh, training in Kathak dance, then went all the way to my mom who lives um, on, uh, in a rural Zulu um, background, and then going into, then divorcing with my dad and then moving to my grandfather who's very traditional, Sangoma, Zulu, African traditional, mm -hmm. then going back to me being um, a devotee, Um, and then finally coming to Johannesburg to then kind of see all of these puzzles. Mm -hmm. And then I started embracing the many personalities that I have. Mm -hmm. I started embracing the many bodies that have lived and experienced mm -hmm. me in the past. Mm -hmm. And so when I can tap into that young boy who was an Indian uh, devote, I mean Hindu devotee, um, Um, I can tap into him. I can tap into um, that that Mr. Africa mm -hmm. who who sees the beauty of the masculine body, mm -hmm. who wants to um, show it off and not yeah. and not hide it. And then I go back into the artist who wants to reveal what is deeper mm -hmm. than just the body, mm -hmm. um, and and speak about the language and the concept. And I think all of that for me is who I am. Yeah. Um, and therefore, I cannot just be one. <laughs> no, I can't. I am sound. many. Yeah. yeah. Is it also because this is the way you explain this is very beautiful? Yeah. Um, is it? Is it? Is it always as easy to kind of like show this multitude of identities uh, to the outside world? Because I totally understand that for you, it's very understandable that you can tap into all these different things and be mm -hmm. yourself at the same time. But is it also? Uh, how does the outside world look at that? My, firstly, my intention is never to show anybody anything. That's not my task okay. in this world. Notice. And I, and I never owe anybody <laughs> an explanation of who I am and what I do. 
I think um, if I if I tend to, for example, then I have to do a, a performance or a festival such as Afro Vibes, yeah. I definitely um, have to then um, use more of my artistic and more of my artistic self, mm-hmm. which I um, tap into as much as I tap into my kind of commercial work that I do. And I think it's always about um, being present in every single moment. Um, but when it comes to me having to present, mm. it, either because maybe I have to do a performance or I am wanting to present an idea, and therefore then I go into it with the intention of representing and presenting that concept or idea. But for me, my daily life, I walk out whatever I want to do, I do it. Um, um, it's actually funny because when I, when I came to Amsterdam, mm. I saw a lot of the me's in me because I'm, I'm also the <laughs> waiting for the train, waiting for the train, go, go home, sleep, go. Yeah. Um, even in South Africa, I'm, I'm that kind, uh, which, is, which is very interesting for me to, to find that even in Europe, I can find similarities of my own identity here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're going to talk a bit more about that yeah. in the next part of the uh, panel. Cool. <laughs> I was just wondering, Igor, how is this uh, for you? Do, do you find it... What do you think about when you hear the concept artist? Is that something you relate to? Or do you have like a similar exper- experience mm-hmm. as Finch does? Yeah, a little bit. It's always... It's such, um, it's such a big title to carry and an obligation to fulfill, I think. So um, I sometimes say it in the context of when you have to explain someone what you do or like in I work in the performative arts mm. um, but it's um, I find it hard to name myself an artist in the sense that it's mm-hmm. it's just a big title to carry I think and mm-hmm. even though I study at the school of arts it's still like um, I don't know it feels it feels heavy um, so I like to kind of like <laughs> show myself instead of well, there you go. Well, that's an old picture. Um, yeah, we brought some images. I was about to say I never show off my body, but no, this is in the period that I made solo performances. So, um, yeah. yeah, hi. Um, no, but I can definitely relate to when you say like I like to dive into the depths of um, different personalities and show them all or be them all i i I can relate that with my cultural background growing Mm -hmm. up in the netherlands and Mm -hmm. studying in holland Mm -hmm. um it's it's really um sometimes you feel really like torn into Mm -hmm. thousand pieces Mm -hmm. and yet you feel like oh it's really hard sometimes but also Mm -hmm. very very powerful Mm -hmm. and beautiful to possess them and to know them all and um you never get like um well, sometimes you get tired of knowing other pieces <laughs> from mm. yourself, but also um, exploring them deeper or mm. showing them even more um, via the work or uh, performances. Mm. So in that sense, this artistry or being an artist, it means, I think to me, really like sh- knowing yourself even more in all the levels that you mm. um that you have as a human being Mm -hmm. um, without feeling the obligation to show it to the world. Um, By coincidence, I do that through theater and dance, I think. But I could also do that through writing or just, I don't know, taking on this shirt, for example. So it's really, it's the same to me. Yeah. It's it's the process. For me, I'm actually uh, in the process of thinking about the process of naming things yeah. is that every time I'm in a dinner or you meet somebody, it's always, hi, my name is, mm. and I do this. And the only reason we always say I do this is so that person mm. can kind of know how to interact with you. Mm. Mm-hmm. If you say I'm a doctor, then you know, oh, okay, then let me give me him or her some more respect. Oh, he probably mm-hmm. knows about this, so, you know, mm-hmm. or I am an artist. Oh, okay, probably, probably doing some work. Must be hard work. for you. <laughs> so hard. 
You know, how do you how do you survive? How do you <laughs> how do you okay? eat? How do you eat? <laughs> yeah. And so the whole thing of naming things is just a society mm -hmm. uh, inscribed language, yeah. which is an artist uh, more than um, as 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 art. It's our job to kind of put that against the audience and let them see that this is what the society is, and therefore we can change that. Yeah. Um, delving into um, one of the themes you discuss in your work, um, you um, a lot of your artistic work revolves around the black body and how people perceive it. Mm -hmm. um, I was just wondering when uh, when did you start question questioning that perception of the of the black body? Well, I think um, the work that I'm that I've presented and I've been working on for the past six seven years now is Bina. Um, so Bina uh, started in 2017 mm -hmm. out of um, my kind of yearning to understand my own um, uh, identity, one, sexuality, mm -hmm. two, but also my relationship with not just men around, um, not just black men around where I was staying in my community, but also with my father. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt that I grew up wanting many different things. He, he, he grew up as a karate instructor. Uh, and he was into martial arts and like the black belt and all of that, yeah. which is so interesting. Um, but then I grew up in the total, it's kind of the same um, sport or genre, but I was more into the very soft way of moving the body, contemporary mm. dance, mm. Um, uh, ballet. Mm. And so I would walk out of, uh, of, 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 uh, um, like in the morning in a leotard, I'm in a leotard in tights. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm just like this thin boy. Uh, I've got tights on, I've got makeup, probably I'm going to do a performance. Yeah. And he just never understood it. And also I, I was trying to understand, then what, what is this thing called man? Mm -hmm. what, 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 what is it? Is it what, um, so I was, so as I was growing up, a lot of the uh, kind of the books that I read kind of gave you the same definition. Mm -hmm. A man looks like this. A man uh, loves a woman or is in love with another woman and needs to act strong and powerful and never vulnerable and never open. Mm -hmm. So I grew up with knowing that. And, and, but my heart and my way of being was never, was never agreeing to what that is. Yeah. Uh, and so most of the work um, for Bina came from the interviews, uh, asking very simple questions. What is man to you? Um, after that, I went to Grahamstown Arts Festival, yeah. um, where it was a collaboration with Drama for Life. And Drama for Life just approached me and they said, Corneli, we just want you to interpret um, this thing about masculinity. Mm. And what I did for that performance was a site-specific performance. And all I did was stand at different uh, spaces around the garden. Just stand and look at the audience. Mm. for the whole, like. I think the performance is like an hour, maybe 90 minutes. And so you'll find different people walking, dogs, cats, whatever, <laughs> children, and they'll just see this, this, this body just standing. Out of that, then I started working as a solo, working in the solo in terms of Fubina. And I went back to my own cultural um, upbringing, which is Zulu, a Zulu cultural upbringing. Yeah. And I realized that even with the songs are very um, um, hetero, heteronormative, that the songs that we sing in our, in, in, in our ceremonies are heteronormative, yeah. that they are always pursuing this big, gigantic idea of a man that is very vulnerable and strong. Mm -hmm. The very traditional very idea traditional of masculinity. And, yeah. and, and cannot be broken. Yeah. Um, I, then, I, I mean, one thing that I, I noticed, I mean, I remember this, this um, old man I was speaking with, a uh, black man, and he told me um, one thing that I'll never, I'll never forget. He said, it's so hard for me to be a man uh, I think he was about, what, 70, yeah. in the late 70s. He said, because when I'm with my wife, I have to be the husband, I have to be the giver, I have mm. to be the provider, I have to be the, the, the financial giver, I have to be strong, I have to be so many things. Mm -hmm. And he was just like, it's very difficult. Yeah. But I can't not do it because these are the, 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 the many platforms and things that are, 
that are given to us by society growing yeah. up. The limiting yeah. box that is also traditional masculinity. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Um, <coughs> I was wondering because Pina is is. I was wondering uh, specifically how has it affected like working on Pina because you've been working on it for a long time. How yeah. has it affected your own relationship with your body? Oh, I think it has. It's a beautiful question. Um, Bina has brought me closer to the the soft the soft uh, energy that I that I that I kind of shut down a lot, um, especially growing up in such a such a heteronormative society, um, and it has allowed me to accept the softness. Um, Long story short, uh, in going into a relationship, going into a traumatic after you break up, yeah. uh, I shut down, I got depressed, I got stressed, and I was just a full vulnerable. I went into a, then after that, I went into a reality TV show. <laughs> As one does when one breaks up. Because <laughs> I thought I was going to find love, and I didn't find love, I actually found myself. I found. It's maybe better, you think? It was so much better, and I realized that it was because I didn't love myself that. That, uh, that enough yeah. um, and so coming out of it I'm much more um, able to accept my good and my bad my dark and my light mm -hmm. my masculine and my feminine uh, my moments of toughness and weakness and see them all as this beautiful process of existing yeah. um, so Bina becomes a voice, it becomes a song it becomes a chance to go back to who I am inside mm -hmm. And I love working with Jose uh, Clinton um, because he's also so and he's very strict. You know, you you can never you can never know if Jose is mad or is he angry. Mm -hmm. He's very he's very one sided. So it's quite quite interesting yeah. uh, working with somebody who's also very uh, different. Yeah. And to be able to then connect on stage. Mm -hmm. um, in that moment, and I think, oh wow, then why was I overthinking this yeah. when all I needed was to connect with not just me but with the people that is that are next to me? Yeah, it's a process. Um, Igor, I was also wondering, um, your in your focus in your work um, maybe focuses more on the queer body, um, and how has how has your artistry affected your relationship with your uh, own body? Because you do, it's also very physical, and you have your own story. It's very confronting, <laughs> in a sense. That's why we're here. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, um, I, I always realize that I demand a lot from the performers in the sense of um, showing this human personality on stage mm -hmm. uh, in his uh, essence, in his full vulnerability and basically nudity as well. Mm -hmm. um, like physically, but also emotionally and mentally. I When you're on stage, I want you to be there 100% aware of your body your emotions your thoughts your energy like i need you to know the space that well um so it's it's really um in that sense how i performed when i was on stage mm -hmm. um so that's something that i translated into my my work as a director or as a maker and creator um but on the other hand translating it into movements which are really tough and long and heavy sometimes it's it's um it goes to pain and uh, when you reach that spot um uh, and you go beyond pain mm -hmm. you get into pleasure so i i get a lot from my performers um when they work with me it's like um when they are being interviewed or when people ask them um, how, how does that feel that must be really really hard mm -hmm. um you see a big difference uh, from before the performance and after the performance, just in their face, um, because they are so more connected to themselves because they are, have no energy to put on a mask. Mm -hmm. And therefore it's really confronting, like I really want to go there every single day and to be open and, you know, to have an open heart and fully be present in the now. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, it's, it's a big practice. Um, to do that, I think, in our society, but therefore on stage and the performers can can give that to the audience mm. to to show what it means to be um, fully present and vulnerable, yeah. which is very confronting as well and very touching and people um, 
people can't take it sometimes. So yeah. sometimes they walk away, but most of the times they start crying or yeah. feel very touched and blessed by seeing the performance. So That's it's beautiful. It's a big, um, um, big privilege to work with strong bodies. Um, yeah. Strong bodies, able dancers. Yeah. Strong bodies, able dancers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, um, but also willing to go there in the process of rehearsals to dive into your personal powers and your vulnerabilities yeah. and your, um, uh, like you say, like all the the whole spectrum of being a human. It's mm -hmm. not just like oh, I'm an artist, I'm a performer, then yeah. I'll do this. Yeah. Um, and sometimes one goes further than the other, and that's mm -hmm. totally fine. But um, it does give them an extra layer yeah. uh, to, uh, how do you say that, like to, um, to get energy from, I think. Mm. Yeah, well, that's beautiful. Um, we're going to continue with the second part of this battle, but before that, um, we have a special musical intermezzo uh, by Bahi. She's sitting here, right here. Um, Bahi is a singer, songwriter, musician, and producer, born and raised here in Amsterdam, raised in an Eritrean household. Um, her album is coming out 11th of November. Go check it out. Um, it's her debut album. So um, give a warm, warm welcome to Bahi. Hello, good evening, everyone. Hello. Thanks for having me. So my name is Baggy, and um, I'm gonna play a couple of songs for you. The first one is called All One. Connected, future affected by what you think and feel is ultimately real. I've been looking and looking for ways to heal. I thought I was too sensitive, not knowing that it is my gift, so you can lie to me. I listen with my body, don't need my eyes to see. Cause when I'm empty, I'm happy I free my mind like it's 5D Every day feels like Sunday Take it slow like it's payday I roll my own biz I'm with my soulmates One love and no hate Self-love feels so great Connected to the tree of life Open your eyes and realize It was already there Right before your eyes We are in paradise Thank you. Yes, thank you. All right. 
So the next song is called Joy. And um, in 2021, I was in Ethiopia. And um, while I was there, I was, being, I was asked to write a song uh, with the thought, Joy as an Act of Resistance. And um, I didn't like the question because of the people that it came from. So I decided to, to write the song with everything but joy as an act of resistance. But lately, I've been thinking about it again and, uh, and the meaning of resistance. And I think it's beautiful. But now I'm also trying to find the joy in surrender. But So it's not in the song <laughs> yet. But I just wanted to give that as well. So the song is called Joy. It's not about the money that you have or that you lose. Not about family that you get or that you choose. Not even about fame, success, the job that you do. You gotta find joy in existence. Sometimes it's hard to choose yourself with love and follow through. See, all these opinions make it so damn hard to move. So don't forget this life is yours, every second just for you. You gotta find joy in persistence. So laugh, cry, dance, and sing. on thank you so much that was so touching and beautiful and i think a beautiful message yeah thanks so much My give pleasure. her one more round of applause come thank on guys you. um so then we come to the last well take a small 20 minutes for uh the remainder of our conversation okay. um finch i would like to start with you uh, again um well as an artist uh, you move between south africa and western europe mm. uh does your work get a different meaning depending on the context whether you perform something in well let's say south africa or uh, somewhere here in europe mm -hmm. the most definitely um, I think in the sense that the work that I do um, has a lot to do with how 
the audience, especially Western or, or I don't know if Western is the correct word, mm -hmm. but European audiences see the black body. Mm -hmm. And when I was working with the show and kind of doing my research, um, I found two things. The first one is, and not this is not just in a European sense, mm -hmm. but in, in a general sense, when you see two black or maybe not two, but you see a black body on stage, there's either two ways of looking. There's either there's the look that is looking at the uh, body as exotic, mm. um, as uh, seeing it for pleasure, um, or seeing it for, so, or seeing it in the kind of the opposite sense where you feel uh, sympathy for. So most artists, especially the work that I've seen, where I come from in South Africa, um, most of our black artists, what we've continued to do is that we continue to work on exposing our, not our vulnerability, our pain, mm. um, especially for European audiences. Um, and I think most of that work for me, as much as it's a good starting point, mm. I don't think it should be the starting and the end point of what we have as our stories. Mm -hmm. Our stories as black people and as black uh, communities should never just about should never be just about pain or struggle mm -hmm. or should never just be about the pursuit for freedom or liberation. Mm -hmm. I think there's more that we can talk about. There's more narratives. There's more narratives. There's more beauty. There's the in-between. There's the abstract. There's the minimalism. Mm -hmm. There's the, um, the, 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 all, of the other para all of the other stuff that happens around which I'm trying to explore in the work that I'm doing now. Um, and so... And so I always try to um, confront myself, firstly, in my own black body, by how deep can I go into the, this performance that I'm doing? And then also to confront the audience mm -hmm. so that they don't see just the physical, but they see the human, they see the depth, mm -hmm. they see the, 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 the yearning, the, the story. Um, which is, which is, I think, for for me, what Bina is is totally about. Mm -hmm. um, does this also relate to um, decolonizing the black body? Is this what you mean by that? Yes, I think uh, a lot of our um, black writers and scholars have always pushed um, the 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 kind of the la the, the conversation around decolonization. Um, and I think decolonization is always, for me, about observing and being and kind of being very conscious. Mm -hmm. For example, most of the work that we do or the language that we speak, I speak in English. That's not my mother language. Mm. My mother language is Zulu. But for me, to, for you to hear me, I have to speak in a language that is dominated mm -hmm. and it continues to dominate. For me, getting lost around Amsterdam, I have to speak in English. I can't go, yo, because <laughs> nobody's going to understand that. Yeah. The second part of it is that most of the kind of the, the way our world has put on the, the kind of I mean, colonization is still existent even now mm -hmm. through the texts that we read, through the media that, through going, you just just walking out. For example, you'll see that the robot is green, which is fine, but the most dominant lines are white lines. They are the ones that mm -hmm. tell you to move or not move. Mm -hmm. um, you go to high school. Um, I know in my, my primary school, even, um, children are still being taught that actually black people are the minority mm -hmm. and that black people suffered. Why are we still learning that in 2022? It's always then always about the pursuit for the black person to be liberal and to be liberated, mm -hmm. which I don't say that it's a wrong thing, mm -hmm. but I'm saying that there is more to that. Yeah. And maybe That's then the more, the more for me is what the piece is about. Yeah. It's the it's, it's the piece is that is that is that the the kind of the impetus or the, the the platform that we are given is through dance is through doing a show 
But when the audience leaves, they leave feeling so visceral, feeling mm -hmm. so in their bodies mm -hmm. and not just seeing two black guys sweating on stage. Mm -hmm. um, there's joy that happens. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's emotion, there's pain, there's happiness, there's sadness. Yeah. And they feel all of these things just through the process because we also go through mm -hmm. it. And that for me is what is the most important. Mm -hmm. um, which is the what is the beyond yeah. that I'm working towards. Yeah, um, I think both of your work, uh, both of your kinds of work, also kind of um, try to maybe influence the discourse as well, or have like some kind of like political side to it. Um, do you feel that uh, like so societal engagement or societal effect is a prerequisite for being a good artist? No, no? not to me at no? least. I. I I thank you for putting out the words political to my work, but I wouldn't see it like yeah. that. No, it's to me, it's very personal mm -hmm. and therefore maybe political, but I never um, try to put like a political touch mm -hmm. to it. Or of course you can choose that perspective or yeah. paradigm, but to me it's it has nothing to do with politicality or um, it's, it's really being being a human being mm -hmm. um, with a body mm -hmm. and um, challenging that body. Mm -hmm. That is like the first and foremost goal that I yeah. um, have in mind when I create or come up with a concept and how can I challenge that with the message, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but that message is also in its um, in an abstract form. So mm -hmm. it's not it's not only that message that you have to see or swallow when you see the performance yeah it's it's more it's more to that therefore i like repetition and yeah. uh, endurance so to kind of um to make it um to make it hard and easy at the same time it's really hard to explain if you didn't see the performances yeah, but I it's can imagine. Um, like taking one movement for 55 minutes it you have to be able to keep that tempo up as a performer but also as a as a maker to cr to to create an interesting dramaturgy mm -hmm. for the audience to keep up with it and um it's basically a story of <coughs> Um, it's a book of one sentence, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, so how are you gonna um, place your letters and your yeah. and your intonations and your rhythms and when do you turn the page and, and that? Well, um, so it's really it's it's really telling more story a personal story than a political one to me. Yeah, is that the same for you? Or yeah, I think for me it goes back to the first conversation we talked about naming things mm -hmm. um, that as an audience or as a, rev uh, a reviewer or somebody who critiques work, you always want to box. So even political for me, is still a typecasting that it should be mm -hmm. about this, you know, it, mm -hmm. it, then are you referencing that? I've, I've got so many questions from the audience saying, but why did you use the word Bina? Because there's Bina Bausch. Mm -hmm. um, and it, are you like referencing her work? Are you like, to, I was like, when I did it, when I started, when I got the the, um, the the title for the work Bina, before it wasn't called Bina, it was called Amahubo, and Amahubo in in Zulu means songs or songs of songs, and it was a small book that my grandmother used to kind of teach me to say, okay, they need to learn these word these these words and so that you're going to go front of people in on church and then you're going to say it and i just couldn't i always fumbled the words up yeah. so i would read the first i would read and then i'll sing and then i'll get lost and then i'll <laughs> and I'll, i'd get so frustrated and then she'd be like no come down go for it go for it and i just yeah. never so bina is a song in in Sitswana. It means a song, mm. uh, but it was beautiful because people then were like, "Oh wow, were you?" I I, I didn't know that it was it meant song. Mm. It means that we could always rewrite, we could always rewrite or reinscribe uh, the words that are given to us. So like Pina, a lot of people think Pina Pina Bausch, but now when they see Pina, they think, "Oh wow, then it means song. It means visceral. It means it means much more than just what I know." Mm -hmm. So even the word political. Political can go out, and you can reinscribe political to be something that is not just about divide. That it can be something more than just um, about power. 
-hmm. which is what I'm always pushing, is that we push and we change and we subvert the narrative because the narrative is not serving anybody in this room, mm -hmm. not serving anybody online, but the narrative is keeping us where we should be. Mm -hmm. which is divided, which is all about, okay, we still need to be out of decolonization. We mm -hmm. shouldn't. Yeah. I think uh, maybe um, maybe political wasn't the right word to use, but I was kind of wondering in um, to what extent you feel like... Um, you feel like you have a duty toward maybe or maybe not duty towards your audience, but in terms of um, to what extent you want to change the audience minds about something in to what extent you want to challenge them when it comes to the black body, when it comes to gender. I think mm -hmm. that's what I yeah. kind of meant with political. Yeah, I think I was about to ask, what do you mean by political? But I think, well, I, can I, think <laughs> I can now yeah. kind of give the answer to myself mm -hmm. but yeah this challenge of perspectives like to, to change perspective or even challenge it question it mm -hmm. that is like um, um, it's a goal mm -hmm. um, beside like just doing what you love and creating the idea that you have and yeah. putting them on stage and finding this this necessity to like oh my god I have to do this otherwise I will die you know yeah. that's something that I always feel and then when I'm done when the premiere is there and then I'm like okay what's next so it's yeah. it, it goes on so um, that need is first mm. uh, it's a priority and then to change this perspective of course you hope that people will go leave the space and think like wow I've never mm. I've never seen something like this or mm -hmm. that really made me think of um, whatever and um, or that is something really new to me mm. or I felt this and this and my main goal basically is to make people not think with their heads but with their underbelly yeah to really like a sink, feeling yeah, yeah like really sink into their um lower lower parts of the body to yeah. feel connected with intuition intuition creativity yeah. uh sexuality um to really be um um kind of um tickled over there yeah. yeah yeah and it's it's so different because when i go into the commercial side of me yeah. all of the visceral <laughs> the, and what i'm talking about is totally in a i store it in a in a in a, in a box in my brain because in the commercial world it's not about that mm -hmm. it's about how do i create the magic how do i create the, the sensation mm -hmm. and i've and i've what i'm able to do is to travel between all of these worlds um, but also find that even in the commercial world, their visceral is not the visceral that I that I describe in theatre, and that's also okay. Mm -hmm. Those two two things can coexist. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, then I um, I want to ask you last more one uh, last thing um, about one of your performances, uh, Trans. Um, in that um, performance, you try to um, try to let the audience experience um, their um, their bodies beyond gender, and mm -hmm. I was wondering what that means to you beyond gender. To transcend what we know about masculinity and femininity, I think. Hence yeah. the name trans, I think, because it's such a, mm -hmm. it's a word that you can put in front of other words. Yeah. I, I don't know the English name for it, but um, I think you know what I mean. So mm -hmm. it's and also it's written with the Danish A E. Yeah. So two letters combining one refers to two performers, a, a man and a woman being on stage in high heels, both wearing just undies. Um, and walk, walking circles and getting into trance as well. So mm, yeah to me, the goal was to really transcend the the image of what what like the known image. Um, why can't a woman? Of course, a woman can be topless on stage, and a man can wear high heels on stage as well, and still be a man and a woman. Like it's, but also not in a way because mm -hmm. they wear, they look the same, they wear the same shoes. This, you know, so it's it's this. Um, gray area that I really want to expose mm -hmm. um, and question and just let it be for an hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which uh, leads me to the last question. Um, the piece you made together, Moving Beyond, yeah. uh, also again that word beyond, kind of like transcending those boxes, those fixed identities, a theme that we've been discussing for uh, the last hour, I think. Um, what does the beyond stand for in that title? 
Mm. How did you come up with that? Marjorie? It, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> it's a title of the residency. I oh, think. really? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, in that so it case. It was given to us. <laughs> in that case, you didn't have a choice, which is also okay. Uh, we can ask Marjorie later. She's in the room, people, if you want to know. No, but I think it's a really good one to answer still. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. moving beyond. Did it fit with you? Yeah, it does. To me, it does. It, it's moving beyond the known that you, mm. that you already know. Because how I work, and I think also how you work, we discussed about writing subsidies for uh, writing plans and concepts for finance yeah. financing your performances mm -hmm. yeah and of course there are differences uh, the way you do it and how it's done in um, and expected in South Africa and the Netherlands um, so it's besides that it, it was also like letting go of a theme or like letting go of um, a certain certain type of style or movement or even costumes or set design. We just came up with that during those three, four weeks that we worked together. So it was really uh, moving beyond. Um, uh, I always start figuring these things out before I start rehearsing yeah. because you have to apply for money so you have to yeah. know what's going to be on stage how money many rules performers roll. you know so yeah everyone needs to get paid and um, is it three or five performers um, yeah. and now it we didn't have that responsibility so to me it was really like moving beyond and just diving into the deep deep creative parts of our yeah. soul and just connect on um, the workspace yeah same with me because I thought it was moving beyond um, our barriers, mm. uh, my own barrier coming from South Africa to be in Amsterdam, moving beyond location, moving beyond culture, moving beyond language, moving beyond the physical self and going and tapping into um, more the more or the spiritual self also, uh, moving beyond language, moving beyond sexuality and mm. or and or personalities. Um, mm -hmm. moving beyond our kind of way of working, our traditional way of working mm -hmm. and tapping into something that is different mm -hmm. or, or in that moment. Um, so it was, it was moving. Uh, yeah, it was moving to be in this, in this, it, it moved me beyond. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's yeah. a beautiful note to end this conversation on. Unfortunately, there's so much we didn't talk about. Go check out all their work. They're amazing. Thank you so much for being here. Thank Good night, Vince so Jussi. Thank you. Igor Febach. Thank you so much. Give them a warm applause. Um, I will quickly close the evening. Um, thank you all for listening. Thank you, viewers at home. Um, at 8.30, uh, you can see the beautiful performance, Pina, which we have been discussing. Uh, I hope to see you all there. Until next time. Thank you so much. Thank you.